In this video, we're taking a look at this Wireless B internet video camera, yet another early 2000s Linksys product I had no idea existed. As the internet video camera name suggests, you can get this thing onto your network wirelessly, so it doesn't need to have an ethernet cable on your Wireless B network, which would have been pretty cool in and of itself in the early 2000s. But the killer feature would have been this solo link thing they're advertising where you could hit some domain name, you know, you can set up with their service, you know, collabretro.rlinksys.com and view what's going on on the camera in a browser over the internet. This would be possible through this solo link DDNS service Linksys was offering and they would charge you for it. The product page at the time says this device would have come with a trial signup. DDNS stands for Dynamic Domain Name System. Basically, your ISP typically assigns you a dynamic IP address, meaning it can change at any time. And this is actually a huge headache to this day in the home lab world with all sorts of ways to solve it. At any rate, it sounds like this thing has a web server running on it and some sort of DDNS client. And it's going to notice if its internet IP address has changed. You know, your ISP has shuffled them around. And I think it would inform the solo link service, the DDNS service, and then collabretro.rlinksys.com would just still be accessible because this thing silently behind the scenes is updating the IP address. And this thing is just quintessential Linksys. The designers at Linksys kept themselves busy in the early 2000s. You might recognize this, the insanely popular WRT54G, a wireless G router from the early 2000s. But of course, before those came the wireless B variants of the same stackable form factor. So we'll be setting up an era appropriate wireless B network with this bad boy today. And we'll get this thing hooked up to it. I'm telling you, the folks at Linksys could not stop themselves from switches stylized as miniature versions of the routers to even smaller versions, which stacked just like their big brothers. I mean, come on. And then the more off the wall type stuff, sort of like this camera, we've got this wireless B game adapter. So, you know, you'd hook up a couple of these and wirelessly connect like two Xboxes over a LAN or a PlayStation 2, if you were lucky enough to add the network adapter. We'll cover these in a future video. This wireless B internet video camera fits right in. I have no idea if it works, but I'm excited to open it up and try to get it going. We'll probably get like a Windows XP machine on that local network and have a good old time. Let's get into it. Let's get into this thing. This was sent my way by a generous viewer named Javis. So Javis, thank you very much. I had no idea this thing even existed until it showed up at my door. Let's take a really quick look at the specs. Windows XP should work. That's probably what we'll use. These Windows Media Player 7, it's kind of interesting. Of course, Windows Explorer 5.5 for configuring it and viewing the stream. And I'm pretty sure we basically have everything it came with, the software and all this stuff. Let's get into it. Pretty typical Linksys box set up here. Mm-hmm. The camera itself, power adapter, little dock cradle thing. We'll look at all this closer in a moment. Some documentation with some notes about 3Net now available April 2nd of 2010. Uh, okay. Quick brochure for the Solo Link service. I guess I should have said, uh, obviously, Solo Link isn't around anymore, so we won't be able to try that. But I highly suspect, assuming the camera works, we'll be able to view it on another computer. Ah, and just like the website said, free for 90 days. I wonder what they were charging. Don't steal my access ID. Ah, no price on this. This is like really nice card stock for whatever reason. The software, I'll put this on the archive if it's not already. So yeah, it seems pretty complete in some styrofoam. We've got the camera with an antenna here. Maybe someone paid $1 for it at a garage sale. On the bottom, so to speak, is the power adapter port and a LAN port. I was poking around the instructions and I think you get it on the network, wired on the network one time to configure it and then you can use the wireless. And it's kind of interesting, it's got these rubber bumper feet right here. So you can set it down and it won't move, you know, because of the feet. And then the camera can actually point up so you could set it on something like this, I guess, on flat on the desk. And then of course on the back it's got little spot so you could mount it to a wall so that it's sitting up like this. I suppose you'd have your antenna up. And then finally, this little Linksys branded dock and it sets right in there and you can kind of swivel the camera around. It's kind of giving like portal vibes. You know what I mean? The 
camera does move quite a bit left and right, up and down, so that's not bad. Each side of the camera has these nice Linksys jewel badge things. Pretty slick. I wouldn't say it's like substantial, but it's also not totally cheap either. Uh, it's not weightless, and I guess it doesn't need to be that nice either for what it is. I mean, you're going to set it and forget it, I think. So the game plan here. I'm going to hunt down a Windows XP machine, and we'll get a local area network going on this router, and we'll host a wireless B network. We'll try to configure this thing. Check out the software, see if we can get it working wirelessly, and go from there. Everyone's favorite Windows XP machine, the IBM Think Center Pentium 4 unit. I have been waiting for the capacitors on the mainboard on this thing to just explode, but she keeps on trucking. I think we've got everything we need here, the Windows XP machine, our wireless B router, Linksys, of course. Speaking of the router, I had made a statement in a previous video where for whatever reason, one of my other routers, the antenna looked like this, and it's this nice metal connector. I had remarked maybe older versions of Linksys use that metal connector, and a bunch of people said, you're an idiot, these caps come off, and I was like, yeah, yeah, right, yeah, right. Sure enough, these caps slide right off, and of course, underneath is the metal screw connector. Now, of course, I understood that there is a metal connector inside. A bunch of people gave me crap about that. Obviously, I understand that a metal connection is required here. But yeah, it's super interesting that Linksys decided to put these, you know, just late 90s jelly bean looking aesthetic things on there. I think that looks better. Taking a look at the router interface here, and it looks like I had already factory reset it previously, so that's good. And I bet it's just blasting out a network. Ooh, Clabsys, yeah, okay, I messed with this one already before. <laughs> That is good enough. This is a classic, a BEFW11S4, by the way. So this thing is set up. This might already be set up. Hopefully there's a way to factory reset it or something. So let's get this on the LAN for our configuration. And I've never even plugged it in. Probably should have done that earlier. Let's see if that works. This thing really does not seem like the original power supply. It's just 5 volts center positive 2 amps, which is probably correct. Linksys wasn't always great about telling you what the device wants, especially with older gear. I'm going to do a little research, see if I can't figure out what exactly this wants before I ruin it. Linksys is still hosting a data sheet for this camera on their website today at Linksys.com, and it does say 5 volts DC external. It's probably center positive. We're going to roll with it. Yeah, it's looking happy. The ready light's blinking. The wireless light's on. Let's see what we can do here. A few moments later, ready has stopped blinking, which means it has fully initialized, that's what the documentation said. But I would expect the LAN light to illuminate because I'm on the LAN. So we might have to factory reset it. I'm gonna poke around a little bit. Yeah, she's gonna need a factory reset. There is a spot right there that this little pointing tool is not long enough for, and I can never find paper clips when I need to do this stuff. I was able to get in there with a single strand of some Cat 5e cable. <laughs> uh, the light's all blinked. They went off and now it just looks the same. So that's not good. I switched the cable to a different port on our router here. Uh, now it's illuminated. Okay. Party time, hopefully. We'll do the software for sure, but the documentation noted that its default IP address is supposed to be 192.168.1115. And I can't ping it. You know, I was just doing it out of curiosity. And then there's another odd note in the documentation that says you must connect the network to the camera before powering it on or it won't work. So I guess I'll power cycle it and see if it makes any difference and then we'll move on to the software. Power cycling it just made it so the LAN light is no longer illuminated. <laughs> what the heck? Yeah, I don't like how that thing's behaving physically, but let's get the software installed. It's going to look around, I guess. Yeah. No surprise there, you can't find it. What the heck? Okay, I think I have it sorted. You can see the LAN light is illuminated now. This router had really dirty contacts on all four ports, so I blasted them with contact cleaner and stuff. And I think a couple of the ports just don't even work, but ports one and four are okay, so I think we're in business again. And I can indeed ping that default 115 address, so hopefully it can find the camera. Let's tell it to search again. Come on. Oh, yes. There it is. It found it. Yeah. Oh, this is awesome. Let's get it 
configured. Uh, we'll just do admin. Input data, how could my own username and password not be correct? Admin, admin does the trick. That's fine. It is 2004 down here. Good enough. We'll stay static so I can keep track of stuff. It's pretty interesting that the, the UI is all the same design language as like the router interface. So for example, we're looking at the router here and obviously this is the same kind of look and feel. We will be communicating with an access point. I think I had called it Clabsys. Look how much fun we're gonna have. Look at all these people. Let's install the viewer and recorder utility. It, uh, this is the viewer utility. It of course doesn't see any cameras. <laughs> it found it. Let's go, dude. View. Uh, that is my ceiling. Hello. Look at the quality. On, I mean, I don't know what I expect. <laughs> yeah, you can really keep an eye on the kids with this thing. Just looking at this again, you can schedule a recording. That's kind of cool. I'll, we'll try a recording in a second. I'll get it set up a little better. That's pretty much it here. This would have like blown my mind back in 2004. I would have played with this all the time. So I'd like to see if I can obviously use it wirelessly without the ethernet jack here. And it's really particular about which network it chooses based on what's plugged in when you power it up. There's a whole section in the documentation about like moving networks. And so basically if you pull this out, I have to power cycle it and now when I power cycle it, it should notice that there's no ethernet and use the wireless settings we configured just a few moments ago. Let's see if that works. I think so. The light's on. It says it's initializing when that ready is blinking and eventually it'll stop and then you're good to go. Let's try it out. Back in the software here. Let's view this bad boy. Oh yeah. That's wireless over Wi-Fi, wireless B to this router that's sitting right on the table here. This is, it cracks me up. I mean, I know it was gonna look bad, but it's so funny to see it. Let's see here. Let's try to record something. See how painful that is. Ooh. Okay, this is a recording. Obviously there's no audio on this little guy. So let's stop that and see what it does with it. Uh, this is what they probably wanted the media player for, .asf, yikes. Oh yeah, there it is. <laughs> We can make it like how good can we make it look? Gotta get really small. Eh. You know, 20 years ago. Gonna get this stand set up, and I just noticed there's actually a metal base. That's pretty nice. And there is cable management guides. I don't know if my power adapter here is gonna do the trick because it's not the original. Let's we'll see how we can do. I like it. It's slick. <laughs> it is. So fun using this thing. <laughs> it just cracked the quality, just cracked. I'm not knocking it, you know, because of the time period. And what we're doing here is like, uh oh, she dropped connection. It just rebooted, it restarted right when I was trying to say something nice about it. Mm hmm. I will be sending my error report. Just kidding, I'm not on the internet. Let's see what they were doing with this Solo Link D DNS service. It's probably actually just gonna fire up a website. No, no, no. So obviously this isn't gonna work because it's not there anymore, the service, and I'm not actually on the internet with this particular computer. We'll see what it does. Yeah, it fires up a, oh, okay. This was gonna be my next step. This is the admin interface for the camera itself. You can see we're at 115, admin, admin. This was gonna be my next port of call anyway. Ooh, yeah, this is, this is nice. Yeah, so here is where you can actually make your account with the Solo Link service. Very cool. So of course, I mean, click here to register. This is just gonna be a website, right? Yeah, you need to be connected to the internet. That's not gonna work. However, on the local area network, 115, obviously, we can view the video in this web browser, assuming this version of Internet Explorer is gonna put up with it. Come on, baby. Wonder what they built it with. Uh, we need to install an ActiveX control. That is completely fine. 
I don't know. Website just doesn't even load anymore. Perfect. This is i7. It recommended 5.5. We might have to pull out an older machine or something. Finally got back in here. I love this art. Look at that. View video. Come on. I already installed this. Okay, here we go. The installation just didn't work before. Hopefully this gets us further. I'm liking it. Yes. <laughs> this is so good. What more could you want? I absolutely love how things look being viewed through this camera. And to give it some credit, it does have a focus ring that I was not messing with at all. So let's get some more stuff in shot here. I had had it like totally blown out. So yeah, you can make it look pretty blurry and crappy. You can see I'm messing with it here and things are getting better. I mean, it's not, it's not perfect, but it's certainly a lot better than the original video I had been showing you. Like I was saying, it's just got this early 2000s camera aesthetic. If you were there and you used web cameras back then, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But even if you didn't, it's got a certain aesthetic that I think most people recognize. It wouldn't surprise me at all if like a bunch of social media networks have a filter that like makes things look like this. Kind of reminds you of like the Game Boy camera, that era of stuff. Let's try putting this thing in another room, see how that wireless B connection does through a couple walls and maybe try a different computer. You know, view it over a different web browser. Here it is, keeping a watchful eye on the Majestic Retro Rack. And it's really not doing too bad of a job, I guess. Well, I know I had promised another computer. I was thinking this IBM ThinkPad 380ED. Super cool looking machine. It's got a Pentium in it. I got this basically for shipping, courtesy of the folks over at Free Geek Minneapolis. Uh, it's got FreeDOS on it right now though, I want to get Windows 98 on it, maybe even Windows 95, that would have been interesting. But if you've ever installed Windows 95 or 98 on a laptop, you won't blame me for not wanting to bite that off tonight. Also, it seems like this guy likes to reboot itself periodically when it's in wireless mode. Seems anecdotally a little more stable on the LAN. Maybe it's just getting old, could be the software on the machine that's like confusing it, not sure about that. But other than that little bit of instability, you can see. It's working great. Check out my new recording and live streaming setup. Well, I hope you've enjoyed learning about this camera as much as I've enjoyed playing with it. It's more than just a web camera, as you can see from the UI you're looking at. Internet video camera with the dynamic IP updating. This was likely a very impressive device in 2004, 2003. I mean, you would have been, you would have been the talk of your friend group with something like this keeping track of your house. It's so easy to forget now because we have all these consumer video recording options that go from relatively cheap all the way up to prosumer, you know, pro-grade security level available basically to all of us, basically the dollar's the limit. So this wireless B internet video camera would have just been absolutely incredible back in the day. And I can't express enough how much I love the look of this UI you're viewing me through. But I think that wraps this one up. We covered it pretty well. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. Lots more early 2000s Netro content like this on the way. And I'm of course on Patreon where I post behind the scenes unboxing type videos. In fact, this camera made an appearance. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.